Palantir just reported another strong quarter, a beat across the board and as predicted, a raise in guidance, which is very important because now their own guidance is finally above the analyst estimates. Previously, the analysts were expecting $2.7 billion in revenue for this fiscal year, yet Palantir, their own guidance was under that, which, let's be honest, never made any sense. Now, first of all, thank you everyone for joining the live stream. I know it was extremely long, so I'll summarize most of what was discussed in this video. At the time of making this video, Palantir is trading after hours up 12 to 15% or so. So the huge swings during the day continue. I mean, we were down 10%, 15% before the market opens. Then we were up 16%, 18% after the market closed. I mean, the swings today were quite something to watch. Congrats to everyone that has been buying the dip, that had bought the dip. When the market opens, congratulations. Now let's go over the numbers in summary and I'll add a couple of things as well. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if not, we really appreciate that. Very close to reaching 50,000 subscribers. So thank you very much. Oops. You can all unsubscribe later on, it's free anyways. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So let's first start with something that we've heard somewhere before. Prototypes are easy, production is hard. Hmm, I wonder who said that. Well, if you don't know, it's Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla. And this was mentioned yet again in Palantir's earnings call. So as I said, these were the analyst estimates. For fiscal year 2024, sales growth of just 21.3%, reaching $2.7 billion. Previous guidance for Palantir was 2.68. So beneath that. EPS right now adjusted 33 cents, 32%. But overall, I do expect these estimates to go up quite comfortably in the next coming days. I do expect a couple of upgrades. Maybe price targets might not go to the moon just yet. But overall, I would like to see finally more than that 21, 20% growth for the coming fiscal years because that's just extremely low. And even the guidance that Palantir gave us, let's be honest, next quarter, in my opinion, they will raise it again. Moving on to the highlight numbers. So commercial revenue increased 55% year over year. US commercial revenue increased 6% quarter over quarter. US commercial customer count 83% increase year over year and 13% quarter over quarter. Commercial remaining deal value is up 103% year over year and 11% quarter over quarter. US commercial deal closed sits at 123 and that's up 98% year over year. The three year US commercial customer count growth sits at around 9x. More on that in just a second. Now TCV, US commercial TCV or total contract value is $262 million. That's up 152% year over year. Now, contrary to RPO, TCV is not guaranteed, but more on RPO and billings later in this video. Now have a look at this chart right here from Emir. Go follow him on X and on his YouTube channel. He just started out. He has already a thousand subscribers. So go show him some support. You will find those links down in the description and in the pinned comment. Now, like we said, it's great, the same thing last quarter, it's great that we're now seeing accelerated growth, right? We've seen accelerated growth this quarter, last quarter, government and total revenue. Total revenue increased 27.2%. Still not the 30% that most of us want to see, but we are getting there. But if you look at Q2 2023, you can see that this was quite an easy comp, right? Year-over-year -year comparisons, quite easy. Same thing last quarter when we've seen that 70% increase in US commercial. Yes, it's true. But again, it was a 70% increase over a very, very weak quarter, same period a year ago. So take that into consideration, but of course, still great numbers. Then they added a new slide. I believe this is a new one. So total revenue excluding strategic commercial contracts grew 30% year over year and 10% quarter over quarter. When they mentioned strategic, that's basically SPACs. That number here is very, very nice. They continue to invest aggressively in AIP and the US while driving operating leverage at scale. So this is what you're getting, growing and margin expansion. What you're getting is basically this, 
rule of 40 becomes better and better. We're now at 64%. It's already quite high. I mean, even 54, 57 was high. We're doing better and we're actually growing faster. As for a bearish point that has now turned into, well, not a bearish point anymore because they've tackled that problem and that's the sales cycle, right? They had problems with sales, which is why sales was decelerating a year and a half ago or so. Now, basically, sales cycles on steroids. They give you a couple of examples. So a large wholesale insurance brokerage firm, 16 days to seven figures, two-year deal. So initial bootcamp, 16 days later, seven-figure two-year deal signed. Automated policy review production use case. I mean, the speed here is quite something. We got another example here, leading global life science company, less than six weeks to seven-figure ACV deal. Leading convenience store chain, 25 days to paid pilot and conversion. This is what we want to see, and this is what I expect to see more and more going forward. Which is why, right now, you see here 27 of the 96 deal, 27 of which were at least $10 million. Usually that number here is much, much lower. So now we're talking here about big, big deals, at least $10 million. As a reference, last quarter, that number here was 15. And actually that number right here, the at least 5 million was 27. Now, as I said, looking at total RPO and billings, by the way, net dollar retention was 114%. So we're up on that as well. Again, still a long way to go. 14% extra is nice, but you would like to see it continue to go up. Now, here we have two different stories, right? There are two scenarios here that you should know. RPO is growing faster than billings. That means decreasing backlog. Billings are growing faster than RPO, increasing backlog, which is what you're getting here if you compare quarter over quarter and year over year. So total RPO year over year is growing faster than billings, but quarter over quarter, you have billings growing a bit faster than RPO. You can also see the difference between short-term RPO and long-term one. Long-term one has actually accelerated quarter over quarter, short-term remained flat. Now, of course, there's more to the story here as always, but I wanted to explain this in simple terms. And if you need a little bit more information, Basically, when short-term RPO is flat or slower than long-term RPO, basically indicates the following one, strong sales pipeline. So the company is successful in securing long-term contracts, as we've seen. Some challenges may be in converting existing contracts into revenue that could be due to various factors, such as project delays, for example. And the company might be transitioning towards long-term contracts, long-term bigger contracts as well, which is a strategic decision that can impact revenue recognition timing. So take all of that into consideration when you're looking at those numbers. Now for the quarter, they repurchased actually 27, well, close to $27 million in shares. That's 1.2 million shares or so. They also generated $46.5 million in interest income. You know, when you have a large cash position and interest rates are still quite high, well, you get the benefit of that net income for the quarter $135.5 million and growing. If you just need the two pictures to actually see what is happening at Palantir, just look at this. Quarterly revenue growth, we are now reaccelerating and continuing to reaccelerate, and number of US commercial customers. That's up since Q2 of 2020, okay, four years ago, up 21x. Now that's a big, big increase, but of course. They started off from a very, very tiny base, only 14. But still, you can see flat-ish, then we accelerate, we accelerate, we accelerate, slowing down a little bit, and now we accelerate yet again. And as you will see, I mean, as you can see right now, right, it's still early days. Palantir might be a big company market cap-wise, although it can be a bigger company overall. But if you look at the revenue generated, right, per quarter and per year, it's still very, very small compared to the huge, huge software tech companies out there. So you might say, okay, that means that maybe the stock is overvalued. Uh, maybe, maybe the stock is expensive, depending on your DCFs, of course. But in my opinion, the company is growing fast. Margins are expanding. It's extremely profitable. So yeah, it's subjective, I would say. But anyways, for next quarter, they also beat expectations there. Revenue of between 697 to $701 million, 
for the full year, they are raising their revenue guidance to be between 2.74 and 2.75 billion dollars. So I fully expect analysts to up their estimates as well to increase their expectations. They're also raising their US commercial revenue guidance to an excess of $672 million, representing a growth rate of at least 47%. We started from at least 40%, then at least 45%. We're now at at least 47%. And yes, I do think that next time it's probably going to be 50%. They're also raising their adjusted income from operations guidance to be between 966 and $974 million. All the rest here remains the same. And so right now, if we look at the graph, of course, we had that nice rebound at the 200-day moving average during that day, which sits at $21.82. Now we will have that jump back up. This is on the weekly, of course. So we go all the way back up to the 20-day moving average or close to the 20-day moving average. Now, of course, as you have noticed, the markets are extremely volatile these last couple of days, whether it's geopolitical stuff, whether it's macroeconomy, whether it's Japan, it's a lot of volatility, plus also earnings season. So yeah, that adds something to the mix. So look at how your companies are performing earnings wise, a guidance commentary on the call that will tell you way more about your portfolio than some macro stuff. Of course, macro will impact your portfolio, but that's short term. In the long term, strong companies survive. Strong companies actually become much stronger in tough times because the weaker ones will not survive. The strong ones will survive, will come out of those times as stronger companies as well. So to conclude, overall, good numbers, good quarter, good guidance, comments on the earnings call, as always, not enough analysts, so not enough questions, definitely not enough answers. Hopefully in the coming quarters, more analysts will have the courage to come on the call and actually ask some questions instead of just releasing $5, $6 price targets. One can hope, right? So that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.